Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to Gal. In this video, I'm showing you how you can take a 2D photo and transform it into a 3D moving image that you guys saw in the opening. Now to create this effect, you need to use a template which I've linked to below. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to modify it. First, we're gonna start by building a depth map of the face. And then I'm gonna show you how you can animate a camera layer around the face to make it appear that it's actually 3D, but in fact, it's just a 2D image. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. And I'm gonna do it with a couple different faces so that way you guys can feel confident in doing it with your own photos. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Here we are inside of After Effects. I have the 3D portrait template open. The first step is to place your portrait image that you're using inside of this first composition called Place Image HD. Now I've already imported the photo that I'm using to start. The first one that we will be doing is this woman with the colorful face that I got from Envato Elements. If you guys wanna follow along, I've put a link to this image in the description box below. So let's go ahead and take this image and let's drag and drop it into the composition on the top. And you can see it's really big, we need to scale it down. So just hit S on your keyboard to bring up the scale and then click and drag to the left to scale it down. And then once it's in place, you can actually click and reposition it however you like, if you wanna bring it more down, if you wanna have more chin, whichever you prefer. I think here is just fine. Now from here, we're gonna to go to the second composition to build the depth map. So let me go ahead and fit this composition to the window here. And you can see here that there is a preset this is a preset that comes pre-installed in this template. And what we need to do is change this preset to the left half profile preset because she's looking to the right. She's not looking directly at the camera. So to do that, we need to select the layer, choose first preset. And then from your effect controls, we're going to change the preset from the front preset, which is this one. We're gonna uncheck that to turn that off. And then we're going to use the half left. So check that box and you can see that this new preset comes up and you can see that there's different types of presets as well. So depending on what type of portrait that you're working with, you can use the left one here. You can use the right side profile or you can do the left side profile. But let's go ahead and uncheck that and let's check the half left and this is our starting point. From here, we're going to find the use half left layer, we're going to select this and you can see that these masks came up on the composition. And now we need to adjust them to fit her face. So what I like to do is actually toggle down on this layer and go into all of the different masks here and select the first one, hold shift and select the last one and then hit command T or control T on a PC to select all of them. And then I like to scale down the composition to around 33%. And then I drag the corner here and hit shift so it remains in the same proportions and scale it up until it roughly fits her face. So I'm gonna scale it up a little bit more and just move it around here until it gets roughly into place. And once it's almost there, then you can go in and make fine tune adjustments. So let's go back to fit the composition and now we can go in and make adjustments to all the individual masks. So if you go back here and select the layer, then here, if I wanted to move this ear, I can double click to move it into place. And then I can hit command or control on a PC and then the plus key to zoom in and then use the H key on your keyboard to enable the hand tool to then move it into place. And you can see a more close up version of the mask. Now what we want to do is make some fine tune adjustments to the points. So let's go back to V on our keyboard to the selection tool and then click off and then click back on a point. And here we can make fine tune adjustments just by moving each point so it fits directly around her ear and hit H to go back to the hand tool, then V to go back to the pen tool. So I can do this to all of the different masks on her face you can also pull the handle like this to make adjustments to the curve. And now we have her ear. So let's zoom out here to see how that looks. Looks pretty good. And now let's zoom in on her eye. Now let's do the eyes. Hit V 
and double click and let's move this into place. And we can scale this up to make it a little bit bigger and move that over like so. So now I'm just gonna quickly go through and make all the fine tune adjustments to the nose, the other eyes and the head. And then I'll show you how to create a background mask for the hair and the neck. And it's totally fine if some of these masks overlap you don't have to be concerned if they're overlapping. So having the head overlap with the ear here is completely fine. So now you can see I've adjusted all the different masks on her face and it's looking good. As I zoom into the depth map here, I can hit command plus and H again. And you can see here, this is a preview of the depth of field using this template. Now I need to make some mask for the hair in the background in the back of her head and down here where her neck and hair is. So the way that we do that is we actually go down here to a different layer and let's select the set back object mask. And here there's a note that says you can draw up to five of your own mask here. And now we're gonna go up to the pen tool and we can draw our own mask. So if I zoom in a little bit here, hold the H to bring the hand tool, I'm just gonna draw a mask around her hair and her neck. And then I'm going to hit G to bring up the pen tool and I can start drawing my mask. <music> Now we need to do one for her hair here. So we need to turn off this depth map. So up here, select control depth map, and let's turn off the preview just by checking this box. And now we can create a mask around this side of her hair, which is farther away from this part of her face. So let's go back down to set back object mask, and let's hit the pen tool again, and let's just draw a rough mask around her hair here. All right, now we have our two back masks and let's go up here and we can go back to the depth map and turn on the preview. And now we're ready to animate. So if we go to the third composition, animate HD. From here, we can start to animate the camera. But the first thing I like to do is select the controls and turn on the relighting. So by enabling the relighting, it puts on a new light and we can adjust the intensity of it. And the point where the light is, is this yellow cross. So we can move this over to be on one side of her face. And what this will do is it'll make it more interesting when we animate the camera, because that light will feel like it's actually moving in 3D space. So if we go ahead and select controls again, and we go to light intensity, we can increase this up just by moving the slider to the right until it brightens up her face a little bit. So you can see it's brighter on the right and darker on the left. The next step is to zoom in a bit because we do not want to see this transparency grid. We want the black to fill up the entire HD frame. So to do that, this is where we're going to go to the camera animate. And underneath transform, what we're going to be changing is the point of interest and the position of the camera. So we're going to use the unified camera tool. So if you hit C, this will enable different camera controls. So this one controls the X and Y axis. So I, if I move this to the left, it changes where the camera is to the left and to the right. If I drag it this way, I can drag it up to move up and I can drag it down to move down. So I don't want it to be this far down. So I'm just gonna drag this back up until it's back into frame. And that looks good. Now, if I hit C again, it's gonna bring in 
the Z camera tool. So if I click and push up, it's going to zoom in. And if I click and push down, it's going to zoom out. So we want to zoom in in this case, I'm going to click and zoom in. So for our starting point, I'm going to click and just zoom in a little bit more on her face as close as possible to her eyes there. And I think that looks good. And now if I hit C one more time, you'll get the camera orbit tool. So if I click and just move slightly to the left, it's going to move the camera. So that way more of the right side of her face is showing. And if I click and move again, just slightly, you'll see it rotate again. Now, if we click and move too much, you're going to see a little bit of distortion here, but if we go up to controls, you can see that the resolution is a lot lower. When we actually export this, we're going to want it to be at around 300 resolution. And you can see that that distortion actually goes away. So at this point, it's actually okay. And we can have this be our starting point for our camera movement. So to make this our first point, we need to enable keyframing from the transform tools on the camera layer. So click on the toggle animation for point of interest and position. And now we have two keyframes. And now if we want this animation of the moving head to be five seconds, and this composition is 25 frames per second, we'll just times 25 by five, which is 125. So here from frames, we're going to go to time 125. And here we're going to change the controls of the camera. Now this is pretty cool. So I'm going to have this rotate back to the right again. So I'm going to click and move to the right just ever so slightly. You can see it started to rotate a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit more. Here we go. And then I'm going to hit C again until I get to the zoom out tool and I'm going to click and go down a little bit just to zoom out a little bit more, zoom out a little bit more. In this process, it, it just takes some playing around with it until you get the right position. So everything that I'm doing is completely just random until I get it into the spot that I think looks good. And I think I'm going to go back to the orbit tool and just move it a little bit more to the right to get some more rotation happening. All right. I think that looks good. And now between these two points, the animation occurs. So it starts at this point here and it moves all the way back to this point. So then we can go to the fourth composition to render it out. And let's go ahead and fit to screen here. And let's go ahead and go to 125 again. And then we can move our work area so that way it only renders out that portion. And now depending on your computer, this can take a few minutes to render out. So I'm just going to hit the space bar to play and it's going to render it out frame by frame, the camera movement. And once it's done, you can see the full effect and whether or not you need to add any more camera adjustments. All right. So now it is fully rendered and you can see what it looks like. You can see it rotates from the right side around her face and it looks pretty cool. And what you can do is you can hit spacebar to pause and you can go up to file and you can export this by sending it to Adobe Media Encoder or adding it to your render queue. Now, what I've done is I've created another project with this guy's face. It's actually in a portrait mode. So I'm just going to save this and I'll just save it as colorful woman to save that project. And I'm going to open up the other project I've already created with the man here. So you can see that this was not shot in a landscape. It was a portrait. Now, what I think this would be useful for is if you have an Instagram feed and you do lots of portrait photography, it'd be super cool to post some videos of your portraits in this 3D mode. So what I've done in the second composition, just like we did before, I used a different preset this time. Instead, I used the front preset and from this layer, I made all the adjustments around the different parts. So his head, his eyes, his nose, and his lips, and all of that is done. So that is good to go. So then the next step is going to the animation. So here from animation, I've already added some keyframes. So the starting point of the camera is in this position and the end point is in this position. But what if you wanted it to be a perfect loop? What if you wanted to post this to your Instagram feed and you wanted it to seem seamless? Well, what we can do is 
since this is only a five second animation, we can actually make this 10 seconds instead. So we can go to uh, frame point 250, which will be 10 seconds exactly. And what we can do is we can have the starting point. We can copy the starting point at 250. So I can lasso and select these two keyframes, hit command C to copy them or control C on a PC. And then over here, I can hit command V or control V to paste it. And so then it goes back and it's a perfect loop. So then now we have our perfect loop. We just have to render it out. So now I'm going to go back to number four here. And you can see that this is actually in a portrait format. In the previous project, I was using the widescreen. So you can see that this has the bars on the side. We want to be using the portrait. So this is exactly what we have. I also changed the aspect ratio here to be four by five aspect ratio, which is ideal for Instagram. So if you click on this little hamburger menu, you can open up the composition settings. And I set the width to 800 pixels and the height to a thousand pixels. And that is a four to five aspect ratio, which is ideal for Instagram. So then I'm gonna hit okay. And then at the 250 mark, I'm gonna move the work area handle here all the way to be just after 250. And now we just have to render it out, which will just take a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna hit the space bar for it to render out frame by frame. And so here is the final seamless looping 3D portrait that you can post on your Instagram feed. And I think I'll post this on my own Instagram feed because I think it looks super cool. And I hope that you guys can use this for your own Instagram if you guys are into portrait photography and wanna try out some 3D portraits. So I hope that you guys found this tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to get this template, you can get it from Envato Elements. Again, I link to it in the description box below. If you subscribe to Envato Elements, you not only get this awesome 3D template, but unlimited other creative assets from photos to graphic templates, sound effects, music, video templates. It has it all. It's amazing. And I use them in almost all of my videos. Even that logo reveal intro that you guys saw in the opening, I got that from Envato Elements. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys want to learn next. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.